Today we are going to perform our third laboratory experiment which is to determine the hydrostatic force on a submerged or fully immersed surface and finding the center of pressure. Today we are going to talk about our third lab session for our introduction to fluid mechanics course that is hydrostatic force or center of pressure. The learning objective for this lab, lab is to determine the hydrostatic force acting on a surface and look at the center of pressure. So after this lab we will learn how to determine the hydrostatic force acting on a plane surface immersed in water. It could be two scenario. The surface could be partially submerged or it could be fully submerged. And we will also locate the position of center of pressure for both the partially and fully submerged cases. So let's like always, review concept before we go cover theory and show you the demonstration. Hydrostatic force, we also talked about this in a previous lab lecture. It is the pressure exerted by a fluid at rest, so the fluid is not moving, on a submerged surface. So the pressure on a submerged surface at a given point. So center of pressure. It is a point on a submerged surface, the surface that is underwater, partially or fully, at which the hydrostatic pressure force is acting. So the line of action, uh, the point where the line of force is acting is the center of pressure. One thing if you see for hydrostatic definition of hydrostatic force, we told you that hydrostatic force is the pressure exerted by a fluid. But we know force and pressure are not the same. Force, if you divide, it, divide force with the cross-section area, you get pressure. So how do we saying that hydrostatic force is a pressure? I think the easier way to understand is that to introduce the term, which is the third term here, equivalent normal hydrostatic force. We can define it as a force that is equivalent to pressure. How? If you see the equation on your left, P is the pressure equals to force over area equals to the specific weight of water multiplied by the depth of um, the depth from the water surface to the centroid of the element. So if you're if the surface we're talking about, the centroid of that surface from the water surface. Now, if I take the area on the right side, now I can get the force F. If you see the second equation, the force representing the pressure, and that's why we call equivalent normal hydrostatic force. So it is equivalent to the pressure. So let us introduce ourselves with our apparatus. We have the level indicator here. I will show you the other side there is three mark we have to use the middle line we also have the balance arm this is the balance arm this surface is flat so we have to align the flat surface of the balance arm with the middle line of the indicator we also have the clamping screw here we don't have to uh, mess with this one and here we have knife edge pivot so this is just knife edge here and it's just uh, standing both sides on, 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 on the clamp. And we have the counterbalance to balance the empty uh, tank to balance the um, quadrant. And uh, we also have a scale. We're going to use the scale that is attached to the surface of the quadrant. And this is the quadrant itself, see um, in orange. And we have a drain valve 
Okay, so we're gonna fill up this tank and when we want to drain, we're gonna turn it on and it'll drain itself. Um, we also have our weight hanger here and we also have our weight to attach here, which is our... Uh, we also have a groove here to hang the um, weight hanger. Our experiment today is very simple um, concept that is built on it is moment we already know what is moment if you see the arrangement here the um, the red circle if we take a moment about that point on the left you see there is a weight mg if you hang a weight mass into gravitational acceleration z which is weight multiplied by the l is the moment which would be uh, counterclockwise and um, if you take the um, the other um, force that is acting on the surface um, if you see this this line here which is the water surface and this is the submerged surface and if your center of pressure acting on this point F we can get again the moment F multiplied by the distance which is H prime R and on a balanced equilibrium condition, this the equilibrium moment equation would be this MGL equals to FHR. Now, our goal, as I said, as we told you before, to find the equivalent hydrostatic F. Now, the equation F and the location of center of pressure, this is our two goal, right? The, those two equations are different for partially submerged surface and uh, fully submerged surface. So for partially submerged surface, if you see the image um, on the right and the left equation on the left, the F force, you can find it with this equation where B, D are the dimension of the submerged um, quadrant. And I will give you the dimensions in a little bit. And the specific weight of water, gamma, we know the value. So we can find, find the force if we know the D, the depth of immersion. How much it is um, under the water. And um, experimental distance. So the center of pressure, experimental distance from pivot to the center of pressure, H prime R, can be found with uh, from the moment equation that we showed you previous slide. And we'll compare this experimental H with the theoretical H, which can, can be um, found as H minus D over 3. For fully submerged surface plane, the equations are a little bit different. The force, equivalent force F can be found with this equation, where uh, B, D, and small d, uh, those values, um, if you see on the image, B and D are, are the fixed cross section. If you see the right image here, and um, those dimensions will be given. And you're likewise, you have to find the um, experimental H, or H prime R and theoretical H prime R. And we already know the density of water. Um, so we have to find the force and this um, H prime exp experimental and theoretical. After we finish the, our test, we'll compare these experimental and theoretical values. Um, like I said, I'm going to give you the fixed value. The apparatus we're going to use, as we showed you earlier, these are the data we have to collect for each um, that weight you add. Collect at least three data because we'll be using our eye level to get data. There could be little off and take average would be nice. So let's see how do should we um, do the test.
So let's start by balancing our apparatus. If you see the air bubble inside the black circle, that means our apparatus is labeled with the surface. And if it's not, all you have to do is change the um, stopper to make it balanced. To avoid any surface tension or any bubble formation, because we're gonna add water into the tank, what I'm gonna do is that take a weight um, napkin and take this um, quadrant out and I'll just um, rub the surface making it white and that way the surface tension any surface tension will be uh, avoided and uh, also it will uh, avoid any bubble formation so I'm rubbing both sides I'll put it back. Okay. Now I'm gonna also going to check if it's, it's still free to move. So you see it's moving. So it is free to move. So we can um, start our test. So next I'm going to put the uh, empty weight hanger to its groove. Now it see it's not moving. Now I have to balance the setup by changing or uh, moving the um, empty the counterbalance so let's take a closer look of our balance if you see the balance indicator the center mark is aligned with the balance arm and the view will be changing where you're looking at you should be placing your head parallel to the center line to see if they're aligned. If you're looking from angle, you will not be able to uh, balance it perfectly. So now I'm going to add some weight to my um, weight hanger. Now I have to start adding water. Before I add water, I have to check if, if, if my stopper is in close position, otherwise the water will go up. Um, out. I took water in a beaker. I have to be careful is that when I poured the water into the tank, I have to be careful not to put water on top of um, this surface or on the curved surface, top curved surface, because that will disturb the um, moment. So I'm, I'm carefully pouring water. I have to keep adding water until uh, the balance again uh, become level with the middle index. So I, I will just keep adding water. Uh, it went uh, up. I have spilled some water on the curved surface. So what I'm going to do is then take this water out from the surface so if I see um, closer the balance went beyond the middle mark here so I can drain some water to put it bring it down you see water is going out to the drain and yeah it's aligned Let's take a closer look with our 50 gram weight and our, um, we drained some water out. So the balance is almost aligned with the um, center line. So after balancing the uh, quadrant, now we have to take the reading from the scale. We have to be careful with the, for the meniscus. If you remember on the previous lab, we talked about meniscus. Um, so again, we have to take the data at the bottom of the meniscus. So you, you have to align your head at the surface, bottom surface of the meniscus and take the reading. Um, what we see here is uh, around 49, a little bit less than 50, so 49 uh, millimeter. Next, we have to repeat the test 
by adding more weights we added 50 now I can add more 50 or uh, many like 100 gram the you have to repeat the process until you fill up the water up to uh, the top of the tank repeat so I have again balanced my our system here for the 150 gram the arm is aligned with the middle line so now let's analyze what's happening here when there is no um, less water pressure on the surface the cross-sectional surface here um, you I apply load and it goes down because of the moment so now what I do is that I add water and it creates uh, a force a pressure on the surface and you know the pressure can be replaced by the center of pressure with a uh, equivalent force we have to find the location but when we apply that uh, force equivalent force at the center of pressure it creates a counter moment to make it balance right so we might have questioned what why we're only taking consideration of the force along this cross section I'm going to show you the cross section in a while how about this and this surface the forces on this surface is balanced by the forces on the other side because they are opposite the forces on the curved surface you see this curve this curved surface here the forces on the curved surface are perpendicular normal to that surface and the key point as we said in the theory this quadrant is balanced with the knife edge at the center of the curvature of the both curve so any normal force goes through the center any normal force goes to the center of the uh, knife edge any force goes through that and that's why there is force on that surface but they don't affect the moment and that's why only the force affecting the moment here is the forces on this surface this is the cross section of our quadrant the force we're um, considering or affecting the moment is acting on this surface the pressure is on the surface and the center of pressure we have the equivalent force acting on this surface 450 gram I had the immersion depth was 80 now for the 250 I have uh, immersion depth at um, 109 millimeter finally I have added 450 gram and I have filled out the tank you see almost so I may not be able to add any more weight if I see take the data again putting my eye level parallel um, to the water surface at the bottom of the meniscus I see the reading of 160 millimeter so this was the steps of doing this test and I we took many data I incremented the weight by 100 gram you can take variable weight you can do 50 gram or so there's um, another option to take the data I can now reduce the weight right I can reduce the weight now you see the balance went up touching the top surface what I can do is the reverse balancing process I can let the water go until it balance itself again with the middle line so this is the reverse process you can do to get more data a little more looks about balanced so you can reverse the process by removing weight and letting the water go in that way you will get um, data for the reverse process so this was the data collection process for this test now all you have to do is the calculation and, and submit your report so we have finished our test now for data analysis we have to create this table in the first column you have the mass that you have added 
next you will add the depth that the reading that you uh, received from the scale and using the equation that we showed you in previous slides find the hydrostatic force and um, find the experimental and theoretical center of pressure as we showed you the equation now compare the theoretical with the experimental and analyze the accuracy you can also find the experimental moment just you have to multiply the, the force with the experimental and force with the theoretical COP central pressure you can find the theoretical moment but that's um, just to compare with the experimental with theoretical once you have finished that table you can create you should create a plot of theoretical center of pressure with the experimental center of pressure and they should align each other you should see a straight line pattern and some data will be a little off um, that's normal um, so you have to plot those data and create a trend line in your discussion you have to compare as we said compare the experimental with the theoretical distance for center of pressure and use the coefficient of determination i square value in excel file you can do it from ten trend line and come that accuracy and um, also calculate the slope of your car, uh, straight line as we showed in previous slide and um, any intercept value that you got and is it ex acceptable or did you expect something did you expect something else and you get something else this discuss that explain any discrepancies you found during the test um, you took many data one data could be off why um, this kind of stuff um, and also report any experimental error and any assumption that we made third and finally explain why we need to know about hydrostatic force what is the application um, in hydraulic engineering and give at least two example application where you would need to know the magnitude of the hydrost hydrostatic force and the center of pressure so that was it for our third lab our fourth lab will be using pascal's apparatus and archimedes apparatus, apparatus. again read the handouts and your textbook for concept and watch the video before come to the lab and performing the before performing the test yourself thank you